Sharon, you can have an opening prayer. Hello? Sharon? Yes, uh, Father, you can hear me? Yes, yes, you can hear it. Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord, at this moment, oh Lord, the very first Bible study we are going to do, oh Lord, uh, with uh, the book of Philippians, oh Lord, uh, with your people, oh Lord, gathered together to seek your face, oh Lord. We pray, oh Lord, that this will be a time, spirit-filled time, oh Lord, where your spirit would flow through, oh Lord, and Lord, your words, Lord, will touch our hearts, oh Lord, and revive our spirit, oh Lord, and you will make us a people, oh God, that will walk through this land, oh Lord, accomplishing your great commission, almighty oh God. We pray, oh Lord, for your mighty presence in this uh, time, oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, so friends, we are very privileged. It's uh, under the aegis of uh, Catholic lawyers and also the Law College Student Society. We are sponsoring this study of the Bible. Of course, my primary thanks to go to Sharon. She's the one who initiated and many others who are with us. So first of all, it's welcoming. And uh, Professor Anton Miemann doesn't need any uh, introduction. He's uh, well known all over. Of course, essentially, he's a man of faith, you know, his simplicity. That's what, you know, we are, we are honored and uh, uh, we are privileged. So uh, Professor Anton, we'll ask you to start off. We'll have about 20 minutes. So the right. program, uh, program today will be your uh, uh, primary talk and also it, the, both Johnston and uh, uh, Sharon will respond it. And about, uh, about halfway through, we will have a sing and we will have an open discussion and it will be fun for anyone to ask questions. Okay, it's time for you, Anton. Right. Thank hello, you much, hello. Uh, you are most welcome, Father. Yeah. <coughs> Good evening unto you all. Thank you. Uh, you too. Am I getting across? Could you? Yes, could you yes. Hear we me can proper? hear you very well. We can hear you very well. <clears throat> Great. Yes. So the assignment given to me by Father uh, Noel Dice is about the letter to the Philippians. Yes. If yes. you have your Bibles with you, great. If not, that, that shall be all right also. But if you have your Bibles with you, you may go to the letter of St. Paul <coughs> to the Philippians. Now, uh, first of all, let me give you a background about the Philippian uh, church. Now, the Philippi, or in Greek, it is Philippois was the first European city to be evangelized by uh, Christians or by St. Paul. The very first European city, which is located in uh, modern Macedonia. Actually, that is uh, northeastern part of the ancient Greece. And Philippi was a historical location, very well known. There were several reasons. One. Of course, you have heard of Alexander the Great, whose father was 
King Philip II, he was the king of Macedonia and he colonized this area. He was the first one to colonize. If you want the exact year, it's 356 BC. Philip II colonized this area and then he gave his own name to this city. So that's how it became Philip P or Philip Pi in English. So that's the first development. And the second development is the Roman, the Roman, uh, the Roman civilization, not at an empire, also colonized the same area in six, 168 BC. 168 BC, before, that means 168 years before the birth of Christ. It, so it became a Roman colony. Not only that, they introduce a Roman law, specifically we call it in Latin, Ius Italicum, I-U-S, or you could also write it with J-U-S, I-T-A-L-I-C-U-M, Ius Italicum, they introduce it in this area. So, and then not only that, the official language of the Philippian area became Latin. Although the commercial language was Greek. So that's why St. Paul wrote this letter in Greek. Uh, not only that, there was another historical uh, moment there. If you remember Julius Caesar, right? Julius Caesar was killed by Brutus. And uh, of course he killed, uh, Brutus killed Julius Caesar and fled with another Roman general, famous general Cassius. Of course, Mark Anthony wanted to revenge. So what he did, he combined forces with Octavius, or the later on he became Augustus Caesar and the combined forces of Mark Anthony and Octavius on the one hand, and on the other hand, the combined forces of Brutus and Cassius met in this valley near Philippi. And of course, Mark Anthony was able to defeat them and Brutus and Cassius committed suicide. So that because of that event also, this city became quite famous, well known uh, in the uh, <coughs> antiquity. So now that background is very important in order to understand properly letter to the Philippians because all those backgrounds are reflected in it. And this Christian community was founded by St. Paul actually. And it seems the Philippian community was one of his favorite churches. The reason is this, St. Paul never accepted any money from any, any other churches, but only from the Philippians, he accepted money. When they send him money, he gladly accepted them. He never rejected them because he was a easy by profession. He was a tent maker. So he made a living out of tent making. So he did not want to depend on uh, his communities financially but he had a different policy with Philippians. That means he was very impressed and he was in love with uh, this community. In fact, he uses the word joy in Greek kara several times, more than any, other, any of his other letters. So he was highly taken and uh, impressed by uh, this community. So because of these reasons, Philippian uh, church is very important. And also that was the first church I, I said, that was established in European continent. Until then, all the early, early churches were in the Middle Eastern region or the, what do we call Asia Minor, modern day Turkey, Turkey, Syria, and Lebanon and Palestine uh, area, uh, Asia Minor. And this is the first European church, which was dis, uh, established by St. Paul. And this letter, of course, St. Paul wrote several letters. We call them captivity letters. I Means to say, they, he penned these letters from the prisons. And this letter is also a, a well-known well example for a captivity letter. He wrote when he was in jail, not in Philippi. He was imprisoned in three places, basically, during his missionary career, three places. He was once, actually, he was six times in prison. And he was in prison first in Ephesus, in modern day Turkey. After that, 
Kaisaria uh, Maritina, a port city in modern Israel, and also finally in Rome. But according to all the evidences, we could argue that he wrote this letter to the Philippians from Ephesus, because there were many people in Ephesus, including the Christians, especially the Judaizers. We, we, we use a term Judaizers, J U. D A I Z E R S. Judaizers means in biblical uh, language, former Jewish uh, people, they were Jews by faith. But now they had embraced Christianity. They had become followers of Christ. But you see, culturally, they were Jewish. It's a bit, bit like in Sri Lanka, for an example, you know. Some Christians are, even though Christians culturally, either they are Sinhala or uh, Tamil, Tamilian, in terms of their cultural, uh, you see, thinking, in terms of their subconscious mind, either they think like uh, Sinhalese or, <coughs> or Tam uh, Hindus. So something like that happened with the Judaizers. So that's why here, St. Paul clashed with them because these Jewish Christians, Jewish people who, were Chris who had become Christians now, there was a small community of Jewish Christians in uh, Philippi, actually. They wanted to impose the mosaic constitution on these Gentile Christians. Gentile Christians means non-Jewish Christians. That means they were Greeks as well as the Romans. By the way, another little information in, in, uh, in Philippi, Rome, Rome, what they did, you know, they settled the former soldiers of the Roman army or these war veterans, they settled that community in Philippi. In fact, the word uh, colonia appears there. Colonia was actually in the ancient time, very different modern day colonia because uh, most people consider it as a privilege to be under a Rome because they had some very good legal uh, procedures. In fact, we don't have time, but if you read, uh, you can read uh, later on. Acts chapter 16. Uh, Acts chapter 16, you know, the uh, they punished St. Paul without knowing he was a Roman citizen. And later on, the magistrate learned about it, and he got so scared because he had punished a Roman citizen without knowing. And what he did, this thing never happened in Sri Lanka, of course the magistrates went to St. Paul and then apologize openly. Uh, you can read it in Acts chapter 16. Uh, uh, chapter 16, uh, I will exactly give you the, the thing is we have limited time to uh, do it. 38, Acts chapter 16, uh, <clears throat> 38. I will read uh, that part. Uh, uh, from 37, I will read. But Paul said to them, they have beaten us publicly uncondemned men who are Roman citizens and they have thrown us into prison, etc. Next 38, the police reported these words to the magistrates. These are the Roman magistrates. And they were afraid when they heard that they were Roman citizens so they came and apologized to them. That means Paul, he was with his companion, Silvanus or Silas. Uh, Paul had actually, he mentioned, especially about Timothy in the letter to the Philippians. Among his companions, you know, missionary partners, he had three favorites, Timothy, Silvanus, and Titus. Amongst them, Timothy was his favorite because Timothy was a, a philologist. He knew the languages because his mother was a Jew, father was a Greek. So he knew Hebrew, Aramaic, Latin, and Greek to the best of the evidences we have now. Great. Now in the, <coughs> sorry, it had gone, uh, I will, uh... yes, now, in the uh, letter to the Philippians, you know, there are several classical phrases. You see, they had become universal. For an example, 128. You see, this is like the heart of the letter. 
For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain, you know, or uh, if you summarize it, living for him is to live in Christ. He, in fact, gave up all other privileges. You see, he also talks about his own background. You know, there is a, an autobiographical, uh, autobiographical account about his own uh, background in chapter three, five, the following. He's saying he's from the tribe of Benjamin, a Jew, as well as a Pharisee, you know, as well as a son of a Pharisee. And then he was faithful to the Mosaic constitution, following all the legal uh, precepts. You see, Mosaic law has 613 precepts. Ten commandments are only a summary of it. So he was saying all these things what he was following. And then now he count everything as loss. Actually, the Greek word they are used by St. Paul is skibala. Skibala means actually human excrement. Although in English Bibles, they have made it a little bit uh, polite, either <laughs> loss or uh, refuse. But he's saying all these became to me now actually, you see, nothing in other word, you see. Uh, compared to the privilege of knowing Christ and dying for him. In fact, he had a, here, he had reflected uh, in this letter more than anything else about his death. He also had an inclination he might get killed. So that's why he talks about death more than any other, any of his other epistles. He may have had a hunch, a clue, that they might get killed. Uh, by the way, when he wrote the letter to the Philippians, he was in, I said, Ephesus, right, in Asia Minor. So there is a reflection about his own death and the death in general. So that is, as I said, the heart of the letter is, to me, to live is Christ. And also there is another well-known uh, phrase, uh, 413, 4.13, which is, I can do all things in him who strengthens me. Yeah. I can do all things or anything in him who strengthened me. You know, he's showing his intimate relationship with Christ. So his whole world has become Christ. Or Christ is his whole universe. He has only one goal in life. Actually, St. Paul had this brilliant level of single-mindedness. Single-mindedness mindedness does not mean narrow-mindedness, no. Single-mindedness means, means actually liberation of your desire. Liberation of your desire means you know why you were born. You have a purpose in life and you are willing to die for that. You see, that is the ultimate level of desire. So you feel very liberated. You don't have second thoughts. You don't have regrets about the choices you have made or the life you have lived. You are absolutely clear about your life and goal. So St. Paul had that, that brilliant focus or brilliant purpose as to why God created him or as to why he was born into this world. Uh, so it's very clear in this letter, he was not afraid to die. And also chapter two has a famous Christological hymn, actually. It starts from two, uh, six to 11, two, six to 11. Originally, this is a hymn, actually. This is a hymn composed in Aramaic, not in Greek. Although he, he wrote Philippians in Greek, this is, this is in Galilean Aramaic. In fact, I have a original version of it. And that uh, hymn is about the incarnation of Christ. Christ's incarnation, why he became one of us. Now you see, the problem is, incarnation is unique to Christianity. No other religion in the world teaches that. Buddhism, Hinduism, Islam, uh, Jainism, Shintoism, no other religion. In fact, most religions are against it because logically speaking, that is something that, is, that cannot be. It's like this. If I tell you now, for an example, let's make an analogy. 
if I tell you now, last night, the president of United States visited me and we had a meal together at my home. Would you believe me, honestly? Will you believe me? No, you might think I'm either joking or I have a mental problem, right? I'm psychological <laughs> imbalance. Or if I tell you, the Secretary General of United Nations visited me this evening around 4.30 and we had tea, <laughs> right? I don't think anybody will take me seriously. Or if I tell you Pope Francis was here a while ago and we had a nice chat about the Easter attack, etc. I don't think you will believe me. You know, something like that is, uh, uh, incarnation is something like that. Because Christians are claiming the almighty God, the creator of the heaven and the earth, visited humanity, not only visited humanity, became one of us, took a human form. So that is too good to be true. That can be considered as the biggest joke in the world. Logically speaking, yes. But that is what the Christian claim is, the, the Christian experience. Now, we also have a misunderstanding there. Misunderstanding is this. Some people uh, tend to say, you know, even Christian, you know, look, even though he was God, he became one of us. That's wrong. That's wrong theology because he became one of us, not even though he was God, precisely because he was God. God has no problem in becoming one of us. We may have a problem because of our pride, right? Uh, you know, even in our day-to-day -day life, sometimes we don't want to mix with certain people or with certain professions because of our pride, right? We think it will uh, uh, harm our reputation. God does not have those problems we humans are having. You know, he has perfect humility. In fact, that's the point of this, uh, this uh, hymn, Humiliation of God. He has perfect humility. He has no problem in becoming one of us. We may be having problem with regard to mixing up and going, uh, getting down to certain people, but God doesn't have those problems. So God became one of us precisely because he is God. He's not a human person like us. He has no pride, zero pride. So in this uh, hymn, so the process of self enteam, enteam, uh, emteam or kenosis, right? Out of love, out of compassion, he totally embraced the human condition. And by doing that, he relativizes himself. You know, when you enter into the human condition, there are certain limits you have to embrace. Like you have to speak a human language. So Jesus spoke Galilean Aramite. He had to eat what other people uh, would have eaten, right? God cannot deliver from heaven special kinds of food to him, right? So embracing totally the conditions of humans, except the sin or the sinfulness. In all other ways, he became like one of us. So he was in total solidarity with us. Therefore, Christ understands our situation perfectly well. Like our hunger, like our thirst, like our other struggles, our fear, fear of death and all those things. He was totally in solidarity with human predicament, human situation. That's why he is truly the savior of the whole humanity. In fact, that, uh, that he ends with, uh, if you read 2.9, therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on, on him the name which is above every name. He became the greatest because of his absolute or infinite humility. Something we may not be able to do or we may not even, uh, uh, we may not even be able to imagine because of our pride, but God had no problem with that. So that shows the greatness of God and the greatness of Christ. And Paul is inviting us to also live like that. Yeah, uh, to empty of ourselves and let go of certain things and to become like that. In fact, here in this letter, St. Paul is putting himself forward as, a, as an example. He's saying, imitate me. Point is this, of course, it doesn't mean we become all of a sudden disciples of St. Paul. No, by imitating St. Paul, we imitate Christ. You see, it was like this, Christ imitated God. 
And St. Paul imitated Christ. And when we imitate St. Paul, in return, we are also imitating Christ. And also we are becoming like God. Not God as such, but you become divine, in other words. Uh, now, the point of incarnation or God becoming us is so that we could also be where he is. Yeah. In fact, he says in chapter 3, 12, verse 12, not that I have already obtained this, so I am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. You see, uh, if you remember in the Gospel of uh, Luke as well as Matthew, Jesus says, be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. That's in Matthew, actually, in, in uh, Luke, he says, be merciful as your heavenly father is perfect. You see, uh, for perfection, the Greek word is uh, teleios. Teleios means that is your ultimate goal in life. That is your ultimate uh, journey. It doesn't mean we are there today at this moment. No, of course not. None of us. Right? We are on a spiritual journey. In fact, Paul talks about here, our true commonwealth is in heaven, right? That means we are on a spiritual journey towards that commonwealth. And in order to achieve our ultimate goal, we need the help of Christ. We need his grace. You know, it, it cannot be accomplished by sheer human power or sheer human intellect or sheer human will. will. With the help of God, we could attain or we can reach up to that spiritual goal. Uh, have I uh, used more time, Father? Uh, uh, no, it's all right. It's all right. Uh, yeah. 20 minutes. Uh, am I violating any laws? <laughs> no, no, no. no, 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 no. Uh, it was very interesting. I'm very soul-searching and then silent, you know. I wish uh, I would have given a little more time, but maybe uh, when right. the question time comes, we'll be able to uh, right, Father, answer. No problem. Thank you very much. Uh, you are I most welcome. A, the recent past heard such a beautiful presentation and evaluation of Philippians. Of course, we are here in the seminary. Thank you. Very, very excellent. So, Johnson, it's your time. Uh, we have allocated you 10 minutes, if you can keep that. Then, of course, we'll have more time for questions. You know, that was my idea. Uh, of course, mm -hmm. I have idea. My idea, our idea. Okay. Johnson, we uh, are ready. Professor Anton, thank you very much. Uh, yeah. I came to know him uh, when he gave me the article written by him on uh, Galileo. Galileo, Galileo. Yes, yes. that's right. Uh -huh. I'm glad you remember. It's a beautiful Galileo. one. Everyone uh -huh. must read. Uh -huh. uh, now, that he was persecuted by the church. Yes, yes, yes that's right. <laughs> which, is, which is not true. Which is not. He was not. He was not. Yeah, that is yeah. his thesis in that article. Uh -huh. So uh, now. Uh, I actually uh, I wanted to speak something else in the sense that not so much on Philippians. But if you but, can relate uh, also to Philippians, I will, uh, I will, I will come. Yeah. I will come to that. Yeah. But my, my conviction is my, my little bit of reading. We don't have the privilege that Professor Anton has had to get into this theology in that manner. But uh, who Paul was, what Paul did and what his teaching is and what is the relevance of it today, I don't think we will can ever become good Christians. That is the truth. Because the Paul was so uh, integral in the teachings that that is being uh, done by the church. So uh, Paul, uh, had a very unique uh, background. That is, he was he had the exposure to Hellenic culture. He was a Roman citizen. He knew what the glory of Roman citizen was. Uh, gl uh, glory of human uh, Roman Empire was. So from the Hellenic culture, he got the uh, the wisdom, led philosophies, literature, all that. The wisdom coming from there, the glory coming from uh, Roman civilization, and then he got so much from the from Judaism being son of Israel, 
and having studied under uh, Gamaliel, I believe, and uh, though he became much more militant than Gamaliel, who was a moderate, and he had this background, the light coming from the Judeo-Christian, Judeo-Pentateuch uh, Judeo, um, uh, 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 traditions. Now, what happened? He brought about a paradigmatic change in the thinking because he knew what, what he knew exactly what the traditions were, what Jewish traditions were, what to expect. And then he all of a sudden found a carpenter from a dusty village claiming to be the Messiah. He only could later on after his conversion for which he spent about four years. And then he knew, look, what we were thinking is not the right thing, but it is Jesus Christ that fits this whole story. That was the paradigmatic change that he brought about to Christianity. So uh, in establishing Christianity, then in the, in the Philippines, uh, uh, Philippians, he brings out this uh, mystical participation, fellowship. I, I'm sure uh, Sharon is going to talk about it, joy, things like that. But his, the only, uh, the most uh, predominant or most uh, important teaching of uh, Paul was the resurrection. Resurrection of Jesus. Even now, the being Catholics, when we talk to people, we are shy to talk about resurrection because people think that we are mad. But whereas Paul, he went to the uh, to to he did he, he went to the marketplaces. He went everywhere and preached all right. But then he went to the high uh, people of highest intellectual capacity and argued. He had the courage and he knew what he was talking about. And the resurrection was the key of his teaching. And then from that flowed this Philippians, this uh, fellowship. Because he imagined the, 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 the a person who was criminalized, convicted, crucified, killed. And then coming back to life, raising himself from the dead. And that dream brought, because at that time, Sadducees had their own conceptions of uh, what's happening. They said that a life, there is no life after that. The other people, Greek people were thinking that the soul escapes uh, from the body and then goes elsewhere, uh, joins the spirit world or whatever. And various stories were there. Even now, when we speak about resurrection, people try to laugh at it. Oh, this is this some kind of a myth. But for him, it was not a myth. This is why even in, uh, in, uh, in uh, uh, I think uh, he brings uh, 15, three to eight, in uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 3 to 8, where he says that for what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day, according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas and then to 12 to the 12. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time. Most of us are still living. Most of us are still living. If you want to ask, go and ask. That's what he is telling the people. Though some fallen asleep, then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me also. Now, some people try to even 
people of other religions or even catholics you know even christian they think that this is a symbol or some kind of you know don't know whether this is an illusion or something like that but some people say that this is a myth cs lewis i read through recently and he has said a nice thing about it people no, if, some, if if somebody is talking about this as a myth he Afrika says Lucia. that <laughs> myth, those people have not read the myths that is the reason so i think i i may have taken too much of time i leave it to you father noel yes thank you very much i think you really hit the nail on the head you know resurrection that's a key hmm? yes, thank that's you very true. much yes, uh, yes. and of good will presented with your conviction thank you uh, johnson thank you very much uh yes we are ready to go to sharon yes sharon of course is also both of the maternities at law they are parity in their own lines you know they are parity so we invite yes we invite roshan sharon to make her presentation i'm sure she also has a slide so the slides yes we are ready yes uh thank you father and thank you dr meemana and uh, mr peeves uh, i think uh, y'all covered quite a lot Uh, uh for the particular presentation that i have a quick run actually uh, of for the book of philippians uh, a very quick run of various joys because it's a book of joy that uh, uh, paul uh, found that these philippians were a people who really was able to understand and grasp what he was saying and he was, he has built a church and that he was so happy with the people so that uh, happiness is coming through when you see the book of philippians and through that i have taken off a few uh, areas and we see the joy of having confidence in god alone where he says these things were co covered like i can do all things through christ who strengthens me and to say that he, uh, he who began a good work will complete it it is we can't do anything we can't start anything we can't end anything everything is minute details everything is done by god and god alone so that part of it and he's the one who provides everything Uh, that too uh, is provided and we also see the joy of finding hidden good in bad situations now paul is in chains but he says things which happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel and see he goes on to say the beauty of this part of it and also we see the same thing in romans 8:28 that says it works together for the good to those who love god so that part of it we are uh, to know uh that uh, through bad things our god is able to bring about uh, good uh yeah, yeah. Uh, so we also see joy of knowing who we are in christ so uh, this part again was touched but i will just uh, recap a bit a little bit more uh no joy of knowing who are, who we are in christ and then he is addressing these uh, philippians who are not just mere believers they are disciples they are, they are ready to move out and take the gospel to the world and he's calling them washed by the blood of jesus sinner uh, a person with sin is a sinner when jesus came and took their sin away sin less saints so he calls them saints and over and over again we can see every book a letter written in uh, chains was written to the churches as calling them saints in galatia saints so we also see for me to live is christ now Uh, it is uh, coming also from uh, Galatians 2:20, which says, "I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me." So uh, here, uh, Christ, we are the people who are working out Christ uh, because He is now in us. So that part of it is coming for me to live is Christ because I'm going to live out Christ on earth. uh like little little jesus uh, and then to die is gain anyone who is dying in christ it, it's glory you go to glory uh to be with the lord and uh, so and then telling know who you are live worthy of the gospel of christ now you are you all are saints don't live like sinners you are the children of god live like the children of god not like the uh, children of the devil and also to say you are not the chicks to uh crack the ground and eat the worms you all are uh eagles fly high do what the lord has enabled you to do 
that part of it. So uh, that's that part. And then joy of faith in fellowship. This is very beautiful, where we see a very beautiful connection between Paul and the church of Philipp uh, Philippian church, where he is telling uh, one pl place, he's telling, you are my joy and, my, and crown. For one says, my joy and crown. And then also says, the joy of faith. And uh, also the uh, rejoice with me, he's telling. Uh, that I may, re uh, and then he's coming, he says, I'm if I'm coming back, you will rejoice, I will rejoice. And the uh, joyfulness in uh, serving, service of your faith, I'm, uh, I'm glad and rejoice with you all. And for that same reason, again, he's continuing, the wonderful joy of uh, working together for the gospel, the joy one gets immense. And we also see rejoice in the Lord and him alone. Uh, again, here, when we say rejoice, there is no anxiety in it. There's no, uh, no peace kind of a situation. Uh, uh, I mean, there's peace of God. And even you're going through the difficult, most difficult times, still there is rejoicing happening because our trust is in the Lord. So that part. And then this is another one where he presses on. And the, the citizenship that is in heaven, and also he says, not that I have attained it or been made perfect, because as long as we are in our lowly body, uh, until we are being conformed to his glorious body, we, we can't be perfect. But we are made justified, perfected, where our spirit is concerned, he has done 100%. Then uh, I have about two minutes more. Uh, this is very important because to be like-minded, I think Dr. Mimana mentioned, I have four minutes. Uh, yeah, uh, so um, uh, Dr. Mimana mentioned about this uh, one state, one mind. Uh, so over and over again, he's telling about this one mind, this mind, like-minded. He said, uh, Timothy is one whom he could trust and send, one who is having the same mind. He said, there is no one I can send to you uh, 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 unless otherwise it's Timothy. Uh, see the desperation he sees uh, that how much precious the people are who's having the mind of Christ, then being mind, uh, like-minded, work in one accord. Then also, again, we see, have this mind to be of the same mind. Anyone who is not having this mind are carnally minded. Uh, so in Romans 8, again, Paul who wrote Romans is saying, carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Here we see, what is he talking about this mind? He's talking about not the carnal mind, but the spiritual mind. Anyone who, uh, now when we see the contrast, uh, we see in John 6, 63, Jesus is saying, the words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. So the word of God is spirit. And our thinking, our circumstances, what anyone would say, uh, our thoughts, they are all carnal. But if we take hold of our thoughts or anything else, what happens is we are carnally, carnal minded people. We are becoming the enemies of the cross of Christ. So he says, take hold of the word. And what the word says is the mind that we need to form in us. And the joy of work, uh, working out our salvation. Here, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. This is very highly misunderstood. Very much. People think, oh, I had to be my own savior. I had to work out my own salvation. No. What it means is, salvation is given as a gift to us. It's now given to us. It's in us. It's with us. Now, what you have, you work out. Think about a police constable on a traffic road. He is uh, uh, working out his authority when he comes with the uniform because his name is in that particular police card. Our name is in the book of life. Um, uh, we are the people of God. So we have the authority because of the salvation that Jesus won for us. So we have the authority to work for the kingdom of God. And when we do that, we need to have the fear of God. Just like in Exodus 1, uh, 17, how the midwives work with the fear of God. The, that saved the life of Moses also. And also, now why was uh, Paul uh, fearing? Uh, he, he never feared uh, about his salvation or anything like that. He knew who he is in Christ. He feared because he was a very eloquent speaker. He was uh, where the flesh is concerned. I think Dr. Gamandi, Dr. Mimana brought out very, very well 
uh, about uh, who uh, the, the Paul is, uh, such a renowned person, an uh, eloquent person, everything. He was scared that he will work in his flesh and not in his spirit. So he was telling, I did not come with my eloquent preaching. He, he always feared because his flesh was very strong. He could boast so much about his flesh because that was he. But he feared it very much. And he wanted only the spirit, only by the power of the spirit uh, to uh, do the work. Uh, one last uh, recap what I want to do uh, before the um, uh, discussion starts is, why do we go to read the word of God and try to understand the word of God and believe in the word of God? Because there are some people who tell me, why are you talking about the Bible? Just simple faith is good enough. No need of reading the Bible. No need of understanding. Uh, why do these things? We understand in 1 Corinthians 2, 9 to 30, beautiful one. No, I have seen, no, you have said it's a mystery, but God has revealed them to us through Holy Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. Now we need to read the word of God to understand the word of God because the word of God is the spirit of God. So um, is, is word of God is spirit. So uh, we can't understand it in our carnalness. Uh, that is, we can't understand it with our thoughts. We have to understand the word through the word. Word explains the word because it's only the spirit that can explain the spirit. So the word has always, Isaiah 34, 16, I love this particular verse, but again, highly misunderstood. There are a lot of people who are unmarried who's taking hold of this as a promise and they are saying, uh, according to this, I have a mate. This is not what it says. This says about uh, the word explaining the word. Search from the book of the Lord and read. Not one of these shall fail. Not one shall be made. For my mouth has commanded it and his spirit has gathered them. When we don't understand the word, turn around, turn around the word of God and check and read and read and see. Uh, just as I showed uh, here. Uh, so if we don't understand uh, what is it to work out our own salvation, then uh, Exodus uh, 117, what was uh, Paul fearing so much? 1 Corinthians 2, 3. Likewise, we can understand when word explains the word, there is always word, by word of God explained in isolation. It is coming with a beautiful connection. It, it is connected uh, uh, very much and it has become a rock. The word is a rock, uh, highly connected and that is so solid that we can um, uh, uh, anchor onto the uh, it is unshakable. It is, it is settled in heaven. It is heaven and earth shall pass away, but the word shall not pass. So we can anchor our soul unto the word, which is a rock, because it's connected and made as one. We can't pull out one and take it in isolation. And if I don't have a partner, I can't say, ah, this is it and that's it. No, this is not what it means. So, um, and the very reason why we need to search the word of God, because the deep things of God, the treasures, are found in the word of God. So uh, with that, um, I don't know whether I also took a little bit of time. Father, no, no, over to you. Thank you very much, Sharon. Uh, Sharon, it was uh, excellent. Uh, of course, uh, apart from her own conviction, she's a woman of faith. Thank you very much. Uh, now we will have a short break. Actually, the, this particular hymn is in real in line with the, the Philippians uh, uh, theme, you know about uh, I can do everything in Jesus who strengthened me. I can do everything in Jesus. And we must say about Bikum. Bikum is a teacher, at uh, uh, a very gifted musician. He has very kindly found time to be with us. Okay, Bikum. Ah, thank you, dear father. Thank you all. Yeah. All the time I appreciate because I also got a chance to be with you. Thank you all. And I uh, sing this hymn for you. Thank you. 
become that is nice it's uh, to put us at spirit to our souls thank you, uh, thank you so thank very you short all. time uh, your questions must be very brief we don't want to take uh, too much of time if you can make your questions uh, directed to a particular person preferably or it can be open but keep your questions short okay it's open uh, for discussion and is with us uh, and from uh, Holland, you know, she's working with us. And would you like to interact or respond? Prabhat, you must read his book, you know, Prabhat's uh, uh, journey, his life's journey is amazing. Yes. Thank you, Father. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Yes. yes. Yeah. Thank you very much for including me in this call. Actually, uh, thank you, Father. I've lived in Sri Lanka now for 18 years, and yes. um, I'm still hoping to become a Sri Lankan citizen. And if not, I will be uh, uh -huh. indeed. Yeah, welcome. You'll be proud. <laughs> for God. And um, yes, uh, I was just reading because it was so eloquent what was said earlier. I was just yeah. reading the uh, book of Philippians and found what resonated with me is to indeed rejoice and let your gentleness be evident to all. And right. um, as we all face challenges um, in, uh, personally and financially, at least we, we have found some like-minded spiritual people. And yes. uh, perhaps it's also useful to say that I'm not only a Christian and uh, basic, basically turned Catholic, but also a yoga teacher. So I've been uh, starting to uh, speak with uh, Father Noel about this, that we have come to uh, certain mutual conclusions, even though I'm not an in-court lawyer or attorney, but I am a lawyer. And uh, so we spoke both about the right to life. And so we are very like-minded, I think, in spirit, uh, even though my culture is European. Uh, I wanted you lovely people all to know that, uh, in fact, I've been in Sri Lanka since 2003. So yeah. over to you, Father, and thanks again for including me in this lovely group yeah. and the very eloquent Thank uh, reflections. Thank you. Thank you. Ben, uh, would you like to... Benedict is from Kekira, a good friend of mine, right, Ben? Uh, yes, any Father. Questions, any clarifications? Yeah. Uh, no, I am so happy to hear the beautiful reflections made by... Professor Anton and uh, all the other Sharon and Mr. Piris, and they are really, you know, uh, it touches our hearts and soul, and I'm so happy. Yes. But only a little question from Professor Anton. Do you hear me, Father? I uh, yes, yes, can hear you very well. Yes. Yeah. How. Uh, in your uh, in your reflection, sir, you said God became man. In the Gospel of John, say word became man. 
how do we see the connection sir uh, uh, yeah thank you very much sir uh, word means also you know it's it's a reference in the gospel of john to jesus the word they are actually the greek word logos uh, actually, originally, that concept was introduced by an ancient Greek philosopher, uh, Heraclitus of Ephesus. Heraclitus of Ephesus introduced that word. You know, he wanted to come up with a concept uh, that will explain everything in the universe. It's like the foundation of the universe. So he introduced this concept, logos. In English, uh, you know, we can translate it into English as uh, word. Of course, the word logic also come from that. The Latin mm -hmm. word logica, the Greek word logica also come from logos. It can also be translated as discourse. Uh, now, the difference is this. In the Johannine logos, it's not the Greek logos, Greek concept. Because, you see, in the Gospel of John, it very clearly says, it was, he was rejected by people and the logos in the greek culture was not rejected jesus was rejected by humanity because of our sinfulness you know we don't like in simply put we don't like good people we don't like honest people we like to be in the darkness so uh, <clears throat> uh, your example in the john doesn't contradict uh, what i said because it's God becoming one of us, but that person, we say Jesus Christ, the one who, be, that he's man, God man, in other words. You know, you, know, you need a big analysis about Trinity, theology of Trinity for that, but God becoming one of us, taking flesh out of love, out of concern for us and for our well being. So that passage you cited and that concept of God becoming one of us or taking flesh, uh, there is no inherent uh, contradiction. In fact, when we talk about the, the, if you want to be very precise, if you talk about the word of God or the word of God means Christ, actually. Bible is a word of God. And not only that, you know, the word means in the Bible, not only the literal, literally, you know, written words, no. The Hebrew word for word is dabar. Dabar means both word and action. Deed and the word. You know, it's not a mere word. Uh, with humans, of course, these are, you know, most of the time our words are empty. God's word is not like that. It, it is made effective. Like when God says, let there be light, there was light immediately. It doesn't take time. When Jesus said to a blind person, be open, immediately it became a reality. Word and action are the same with regard to God. With us, of course, there is a huge barrier, right? Most of the things we say has no power, has no authority. Uh, uh, different writers in, uh, present the mystery of incarnation differently by using different uh, categories and concepts. So we should be able to make a connection. Uh, yeah. Uh, Thank, right. you much, Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Krishani from uh, Campus Crusade is with us. Uh, my old friend Francis Madhivela is there. Niroshan, yes. Ruani's sister is also here. Yeah. Yeah, we can make some submissions or some clarifications. You are open. Correct. Revelation nineteen thirteen says, uh, uh -huh. yeah, Revelation nineteen thirteen says he was yeah. clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his uh -huh. name called the Word of God. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his capital H, his name is called. The word of God, referring to Jesus as the word of God. The, the, the yeah. Yeah. Whole logos in uh, Greek. The, he's emphasizing, yeah. Uh, that's right. Whole logos, yeah. The, uh, so the, the word of God is Christ. Yeah. Uh, and the rest are words of God. Yeah. Very good. I think some of you, honestly, I think, should be trained to become biblical scholars, you know, think about it, <laughs> think about it uh, right? Uh, yes, I Father can see. Noel, yes, yes, uh, Johnson, yes. How, how are we 
going to go forward from this. Yeah. Now, you mean? No, we have studied today Philippians. Yeah. Now with that, mm -hmm. Pauline thinking, Pauline yeah. uh, tradition pattern. Yeah. How relevant is it for us today? Mm -hmm. Now, we you know you you have the Joannine pattern and then Peterine mm -hmm. pattern and then the Pauline, which is teaching, preaching, evangelization. Right. Now, this Pauline uh, pattern or teaching, mm -hmm. preaching, evangelization is yeah. the thing that yeah. we are far behind. Mm -hmm. This is what I genuinely feel. Yeah. Uh, we grumble about our own people of Catholic faith moving out to other denominations. One right. Our 7% or 6% has remained 6% throughout. Mm. Right. Not for Joseph Vaz, Gonzalez. Not. In the southern province now, they had 10,000. It is declining. Mm. Now, why is this? Now, Paul never allowed dumbing down of faith. Never allowed that. But we do. We, all of us, do dumb down of faith. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we, we think it is, ah, you can have yours and I can have mine. This is right. the attitude. We this this arises from our own less belief mm -hmm. in our faith. Yeah. We don't want to talk about resurrection. We don't want yeah. to talk about uh, true presence of Christ in the right. Eucharist. We don't want. Right. We don't want because, to confront how much yeah. of idolatry is there in this country. Yeah. This country. Why is thank you this very much. I think I, I, yes. we are with me, you. We are 100%. Uh, let let me ask you one more question. Yeah, Why yeah. is this 70 years so pathetic? Hmm. Thank you. you. I think they are very valid, valid questions also. It's a call for us, you know, uh, to the task of evangelism. I think Prabhat will be the best person. Prabhat, you have something to respond to Johnson's queries. Prabhat, yes, you are sir. there. <laughs> yeah, I'm here, Father. Can you yeah. can you can you can you hear me? We can hear you very well. Yeah, we we can, can hear we can. you. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, I believe, Father, that uh, yeah. uh, since the Vatican II, since Vatican, yeah. since uh, uh, sec, since the Second Vatican Council, mm -hmm. there has been some uh, misconceptions, yeah. and uh, 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 because some people think that the Vatican, uh, the Vatican II Council uh, took a U-turn. On evangelization mm. and on other religions, it's not yeah. so. Uh, so it has uh, it has uh, it has uh, re-emphasized the need for evangelization. It still maintains our catechism still teaches that uh, yeah. salvation is only through His Church and uh, Christ and His Church. But there is a plausible ex exception that is mm. uh, for people who have not heard the gospel for no fault of their own. And yeah. God may uh, yeah. provide a way for their salvation, right. but there is no culpability in the you know reject. Uh, they are not culpably rejecting the gospel. Right. Then we have, uh, I think, uh, neglected the uh, evangelization. Mm. So uh, it's our duty yeah. to share the gospel and church. Uh, there has That's to be a revival in that area. Yes, evangelization. Yeah. Needs to be revived, yeah. and uh, and I think uh, 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 the declaration uh, Dominus Jesus uh, that yeah. was uh, issued by proclaimed uh, issued by Pope John the, John Paul II yeah. is right. a uh, is a is a ex cathedra document. That's what yeah. I believe, and it right. uh, reiterates. Uh, I yeah. mean, uh, it it wants the Catholic faithful of. Uh, they yeah, they thank, you. thank you very much, uh, Prabhat. Your uh, Francis, Father, you may like... I add something to Prabhat? This is what Prabhat said. All right, yes. Now, how much 
have we, all of yeah. us, right? Yeah. Take an interest mm. in moving our parishes right. to make them aware of Very the good. joy of the gospel. Right. Right. Or mission of the redeemer. Right. On catechism in our time. On right. evangelization in the modern world. Right. On the mission of act, mission activity of the church. Right. We haven't done that. Right. We haven't done that. I do. Yeah, we are. We are with you on that. We we'll also give someone else a chance. Uh, Francis, would you like to share with us some thought with all the experience? You know, he has a uh, word uh, very much involved with the family apostolate with his wife, uh, or anyone else for that matter. Uh -huh. Uh, Krishani, would you like to respond? Uh, no, first, actually, I thank for joining this uh, group. Actually, yeah. one day I share my thoughts. Thank yeah, you very okay. much for yeah. right. uh, Krishani, campus crusade Mama forward yeah. Oh, oh. Okay. So thank yeah. you very much. Okay, Anyone perfect. else? Yes, yes. Okay. Sister, sister is with us. Sister Murhari and Saturday. Okay. Then uh, we will have the closing hymn uh, to our mother because, of course, uh, I was also mentioning to uh, Professor Anton, uh, of course, this, the heart of the matter as uh, uh, Johnson says. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes mother. Uh, Give me a few, uh, two minutes. Yes. Uh, Mr. Johnson, you are right. We still live in the crucifixion era, <laughs> not right. in the resurrection era. Exactly. You are right. But uh, we were talking about Philippines, Philippi, as yeah, yeah. Professor mentioned. Yeah. Now, St. Paul asks us to put on mm -hmm. the new characters that Jesus has yeah. given us, but That's we have true. failed. Yes. Our witnessing value is zero. Mm. When it comes to a disadvantage, we run away. Right. We run away, we don't. Yeah. And it is not a collective effort. It should be an individual effort. All of us as individuals, yeah. we are asked to witness to the values that Jesus has given us as St. Paul says. Right. If I am, I don't know this, I am a village fellow. But, uh, <laughs> correct me if I am wrong. No, no, yeah, okay. we have to 100% uh, Ben, absolutely. I am, also, I am also one of the village mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, right. Yeah. So we'll bring it to a close and at the end of it, after the hymn, we will bless you. And uh, uh, it's open, we will have, uh, Bikum will entertain us with some uh, patriotic songs, right? Uh, we will have a closing prayer. We'll ask our Heavenly Mother uh, to be with us because she's the first Christian uh, uh, who was to be the powerful expression of the God made man who suffered for us and died for us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are the woman and women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, of God. pray for us, for us. now and at the all of our death. We'll have the final hymn, and after that, I will bless you. We commit this for you. Anu, I think uh, Anu is going to. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Ah, yes. Now, in fact, the Viva has chosen a Tamil hymn. Uh, in yes. all our yes. programs, we try to promote you know, the ethnic harmony. So I have made it a point Very to good. include a hymn. Uh, we can say yes. that in our mother tongue, uh, but the, the tune is the same. Madave. Unai Nirei, Mama Uni, Tamil. Okay.
bless all of you may the blessing of the almighty god the father the son and the holy spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever amen amen father noel one minute one and all amen one minute one minute you know for the father noel yeah okay john uh, and father uh, father, uh, father noel yes in yes relation, in relation to the reflections we have already heard Yes, I would like to suggest something for the continuity of this program. Okay, Law, Society, and Saint Paul. Can you okay. see a relation in ah, the next law, session? Law, Society, and Saint Paul. Okay, yeah. actually, then this is really a starting point. What we yeah. hope to do, uh, Sharon, we can say a little bit. What we have in mind, so you take a an epistle or a gospel or whatever it is. We have started off uh, from Philippians. So next time, what is the you are thinking of? what shall we be the study so we will have like a once a month you know uh, yes. uh, we yeah. can uh, likewise uh, read chapter uh, chapter per week and then come yeah. to uh, when we come to the fourth every yeah. month to make it every month after four chapters whether right. the book for uh, yeah. 20 after four yeah. chapters let's have a uh, meeting right. like right. so, so what is the what is the what is the book that you are suggesting for the next month for the month of november like another letter from uh, paul because uh, uh, because those are small and then we can kind of uh, move on actually if yeah. you see galatians so, it's uh, okay talk, so we'll yeah, take galatians so okay. for next for next time uh, when will that also meet your requirement so we'll mm -hmm. take galatians and we will have the seminar at the end of the four, fourth week okay right thank you yeah. bikum it's okay this is optional uh, uh, bikum is going to entertain us with some uh, patriotic songs okay we are ready <laughs> uh, yes anu again i need your help please uh, can you share that song this also yeah. with, uh, because there are singalis muslims christian okay. uh, buddhist right. all are there so there is uh, a great great yes uh, song Anything more, uh, Vikram? Uh, I did something. Happened to the song. Yeah, Tani me, Tani me ka kya andu ko vocal? Aage lastan ka tahan ninge da kyu aage. 
අපි හැම කෙනෙක්ම එකතු වෙච්ච හින්දා ඒකයි තව බලාපොරොත්තුවක් දුන්න නිසා අපාද again i thank all uh, especially you gave gave that good leadership right sakya yeah. nakiya Gimman ni vanne te jivite Yali ke din te ide sel sinni No dani me rande No vi pa ma Ie vene mene yamu